Today we're going to do something a little bit different and talk about something other than the Cup Series. We're going to talk about the Xfinity, Trucks, and ARCA Series this week. Let's go over how their races went at Charlotte Motor Speedway this weekend. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think of the races this weekend? I'm talking about the Xfinity race, the Craftsman Truck Series race, and the ARCA race as well. Alright, I'm going to start doing something a little bit different. Every, I'm thinking every Wednesday, maybe Tuesday night, depending on how many news stories we have during the week. I'm going to do a weekly breakdown of the Xfinity, Truck Series, and ARCA Series races. Of course, since I'm breaking down three series, I'm not going to go as in-depth as I do with my Cup Series post-race breakdowns. And I'm even thinking about adding the Cars Tour to this discussion, but I'm not going to do that this week. Let me know if I should add the Cars Tour to my discussion. All right, let's go to the ARCA race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. All three races I'm going to go over today are at Charlotte Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina, considered the home track for NASCAR. We're going to start with the ARCA race and the ARCA series. So the ARCA race started off as a normal ARCA race would nowadays. There was a couple of cars who seemed to stand above the rest. And one of those cars was Tanner Gray, still looking for his first ARCA Menard series victory. Well, early on in the event, he actually had to come down pit road for having a flat tire. Awful luck, an awful start to the race that to a driver that seemed like he could have been the fastest car. So throughout the rest of the day, Tanner Gray was playing catch up, had a lot of speed in that number 18 Joe Gibbs racing Arca Menard Series Toyota. But another driver that showcased a lot of speed once again was Carson Quaffle. Carson Quaffle being the son of Travis Quaffle. Has done really well in the cars tour the last couple of years. Has made a couple of starts for Junior Motorsports in the Xfinity Series. And he's really impressed in those starts. And he's been so close to winning a couple of these races. You were beginning to think at this point, hey, he's going to win this Arkham Menard Series race here today. And he's just going to have a breakthrough. Because I think this kid could be something very special. And honestly, up until the late race caution, this race wasn't very noteworthy as... A lot of Arca Menard Series races are nowadays, and I feel like that's just because the field isn't very competitive in Arca. Usually nowadays, there's a couple of cars, like three to five cars, that have great speed, and then everybody else is just a lot slower. While you had Carson Quaffle up front dominating the field, you had Tanner Gray driving through the field, making moves up towards the front, up until we had that late race caution that I previously mentioned. They would only restart with a couple of laps to go, but a lot of drivers were on old tires and they decided to come down pit lane. Most of the field came down and got four fresh good years. Well, then you had Tanner Gray, who I think was on around 30 lap older tires than the field, deciding to stay out and lead the field for the last few laps. He would have to go on ultra defense mode to win this event. Green flag comes out with, I think, eight laps to go. Some good racing at the front you saw here. Amazing job by Tanner Gray. Amazing to not just hold off Carson Quaffle, but also Andres Perez. Perez, the current points leader in the Arc Menard series, was so close to getting that victory. It was, But the fastest car of the race did win. Tanner Gray finally getting that first Arc Menard series win for Joe Gibbs Racing. Now let's move on to the Truck Series race. Well, at the start of this race, you had two of some of the fastest drivers in the Truck Series this season, McAnally teammates of Tyler Ankrum and Christian Eckes. Eckes especially was bobbing and weaving, flying through the field, showing that he had a lot of speed per usual. He's had a phenomenal season, a breakout year, I would say. He began to break out last year, but this season, his, he's been great. He's been right on par with Corey Heim, which says a lot. And Ankrum was having a great day moving his way through the field throughout the race up until he wasn't, got into an accident, and ended up leaving the event early, which was unfortunate. He's had some bad luck recently, and he was really hoping to turn it around. But it was very clear early on in this event and throughout the whole event, the best truck there was Corey Heim, 
it's always Heim time in the Craftsman Truck Series. He has looked completely dominant in that safe light Toyota, dominating the race all race long. I feel like he only had one challenger, I'd say, on speed, and that was a surprising challenger in Caden Honeycutt. Caden Honeycutt, a driver I've been actually following his career the last year, year and a half. He's a big-time driver on iRacing. He races in the Cars Tour, and he gets these races in when he can, and he had a phenomenal performance at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And at this point, if people weren't already looking at him to sign him to a big contract or a big sponsor looking to get on a fresh up-and-coming driver's hood, they're, they're talking to him now. They're thinking about him now because he put on a phenomenal performance in that truck. And a truck, for a truck team that's been struggling all year long, but Caden Honeycutt put on a phenomenal performance. And if it wasn't because of a couple of calls, maybe a caution late, he could have had a good chance at the victory unfortunately was unable to get the victory but a phenomenal performance from the number 45 but like i mentioned pit road slash a caution was what messed up honeycutt and it was kind of crazy because those two drivers were the big contenders and they both messed up on pit road at the exact same time Corey himes ended up proving to be more costly because it didn't just cost him the win apparently three lug nuts that were on the tires were not tightened properly Big time penalties for Corey Heim ends up finishing in last place. The best car that should have probably won the race finishes dead last. Wow. And the driver that was at the right place, the right time, but also had great speed, had top five speed throughout the race. I haven't even mentioned him yet. And that was Nick Sanchez, a very big moment for Nick Sanchez and that team. It almost seemed like a moment of fate. For a member of that number two crew, that being Chris Showalter, making his 700th start in the Craftsman Truck Series as he has participated in every single event in the Truck Series since its inception in the 90s. He gave one of the best interviews I've ever heard. It was just from the heart, 120%. He was extremely emotional. Like I said, it seemed like fate to me. And I honestly, before the other night, I didn't even know about Chris Showalter. I didn't know we had a member in the garage that's been part, been a part of every single event of the Truck Series. Back when it was the Super Truck Series. That's crazy. And I love the loyalty and him sticking around in the sport through the thick and the thin, in the, through the thick and the thin of things. <laughs> a little tongue twister there. Very, very happy to see that that beautiful moment in the post race. That was really great for Rev Racing and that whole number two team. Now we're on to the Xfinity Series race. And the Xfinity Series race, like you just had so many different cup drivers out there. It was like we were back in the Bush Series and the Nationwide Series. You had so many cup drivers, bushwhackers is what they used to be called. And you got Chase Elliott out there, Noah Gregson, and Kyle Busch, and Ty Gibbs. That was pretty cool to see. I haven't seen that in a long time. That many cup drivers racing in an Xfinity Series race. I personally like that. I wish they didn't have the limits on cup drivers running in the Xfinity series because it really improves these drivers. Obviously, there would be less seats for full-time drivers, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, it takes the very best drivers. It narrows it down even more, and it really sharpens them. It really makes them better racing with Kyle Busch, racing with Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson and all these drivers that decide to make these one-offs here and there. In the Xfinity series. In this race, there was a couple of drivers that seemed to have shown a good amount of speed, including Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush was really fast, and that number 33 for RCR was definitely the standout over there at Richard Childress Racing. The junior motorsports cars were really fast. Sam Mayer showed a lot of speed. Brandon Jones was really fast as well. Sammy Smith was okay. He was definitely the slowest out of the junior drivers. But Justin Allgaier, in my opinion, was the fastest car during the race. He was so fast. He was dominant. He was flying. I remember he had to go to the back. I forget what he had to go to the back for. But he had to go to the back earlier on in the event and was just passing everybody so easily. He made it look so easy. He was so fast. Unfortunately, late in the event, Allgaier squeezed Ty Gibbs up into the wall. Ty Gibbs and him end up making contact. A very hard crash for Justin Allgaier. He would exit the event. And this seems to happen a lot. For Allgaier at the end of these races, when he seems like he has the dominant car, the fastest car in the field, something happens, whether it's his own doing, whether the car breaks down, whether he gets wrecked, it's always something at the end of these races when he has so much speed. 
very unfortunate for Allgaier. He, in my opinion, he had that win, win in the bag if that didn't happen. Then at the end of this race, you saw some strategy calls, and it ended up putting Chase Elliott in the lead, and Chase Elliott would not let go of that race lead. No one was able to get past him. Multiple drivers tried their very best to get past him, including Sam Mayer, Kyle Busch, amongst others. Honestly, if we had maybe one or two, maybe three laps, Brandon Jones was charging at the end of that race and looked like he really wanted to win that race. He was on fresher tires. He was on four fresh Goodyears as Chase Elliott stayed out. So if we had maybe two or three more laps, Brandon Jones could have gotten back to victory lane and turned his season around because he's had an awful season to say the least. But a very popular win for Chase Elliott. I haven't seen I haven't seen an Xfinity crowd get that loud in quite a while. They were hyped to see Chase Elliott win. It was also a fantastic race. You saw passing throughout the day, great racing. Also in the truck race, I forgot to mention that. There was a lot of good passing and some good racing in the truck race as well. But the Xfinity Series continues to put on the best product in NASCAR, in my opinion. The best racing on-track product. There's just so much passing. Air doesn't play nearly as big of a factor in the Xfinity Series. All right, now that we got the Xfinity race out of the way, I got to quickly talk about this. Cole Custer and Austin Hill, you had that incident between them at the end of the race. This has been a huge talking point for the last couple of days. A lot of people are discussing should he get suspended or fined or anything happened to him. After they had this incident in one and two, Austin Hill decided to get some revenge on Cole Custer by pushing him down the back straightaway and wrecking him into the inside wall. I want to hear from everybody in the comments on this one. What do you think should be the punishment, if any, for Austin Hill. I would like to note, since recording this video, there was a penalty that actually came down for Austin Hill for the incident. $25,000 fine, docked 25 points. Check my video on Austin Hill and the other stuff in that video, the other topics I have going on, so you can get more in-depth on my opinion on what I think of the penalty. What would you say is a equal punishment for the crime done by austin hill because he did wreck him intentionally and it was very obvious that he did on the back straightaway and the caution flag just began to wave and next week you have two series going to one track and two series going to another track you have the trucks and the cup series going to worldwide technology raceway aka gateway the trucks always seem to put on a really great race there and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That should be a great race. And then Portland when it comes to the ARCA West Series and the Xfinity Series. I'm looking forward to that, to the Xfinity Series race at least, mainly, mainly because of Austin Hill and Cole Custer. I think Custer most likely will pay back Austin Hill in some sort of way in that race, whether that's blocking him or being obvious as, like he was and push him off the track or spin him around or something like that. Cole Custer is a driver that tends to get even, so I'm very inter interested to see what he may do at Portland. But overall, I'm just not a fan of that racetrack. I don't think it's a very good racetrack, and from the pictures I've seen of the facility, it doesn't seem like it's a not a bad facility. It's nothing different than what you what you would see at your local road course or even local short track. But this is the NASCAR Cup Series, and I just expect it to be held to a different standard and it's just not quite the facility you'd want it to be for a nascar sanctioned event but i know at the same time the reason that nascar goes here is because there's not any other race tracks that are really capable of holding up a nascar race in the pacific northwest so i do understand and i do hope that it is an entertaining race and i'm gonna be cheering on my boy shane van gisberg and svg i really hope he could win and get himself into the playoffs and then the Arca West race, honestly, I don't, I'm not sure who's racing. I'm hoping Connor Zilich is in the field in the Arca West race. I'm not sure. I would have to look at the entry list, but that should be a good race. The Arca West, I think, could put on a better race at a road course than they would at a speedway because the speed of the car doesn't matter quite as much. But that'll do it for me. I'm going to try to do this once a week, like I said, on Tuesday night or Wednesday, depending on the way the news is working that week, because my priority is reporting on cup series news cup series races and stuff like that i do want to talk about the xfinity series and truck series races though at some point in the week i also do one minute post race videos for the xfinity series and the truck series right after the end of the event so if you want to catch my youtube shorts it will be there
But thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.